Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to choose which stock to buy. So I've just run the BTMA uh, stock spreadsheet or the BTMA stock analyzer as it's known as. Um, and I have a list of stocks here that I'm possibly considering buying. And these are just the ticker symbols. But how do I choose which stocks to buy? So from this list we've already done quantitative analysis uh, through the BTMA analyzer and we have all the data we have up to 10 years of data here for the quantitative analysis which is more objective it's factual and provides the actual numbers of evidence of whether we should buy this stock or not whether it's a good company at a bargain price now the next thing what we want to do is qualitative analysis to see if these are actually quality companies and if they actually fit our own personal criteria of investing. So right now according to the BTMA analyzer uh, these are all marked as uh, good companies or they have a good company rating and they're at a bargain price. So all the ones here that are in yellow. So going down, there's quite a few of them as we can see. Okay, around 20 some. Uh, so let's go, and the easiest way to find out if there are quality companies for us to invest in, the second part of the analysis, is to go to my investment plan. And um, what we want to do is create my investment plan. So now that we have the data in here, again we're going to go to My Investment Plan and then Create My Investment Plan. So yes, I would like to continue. And what it's going to do now is it's going to ask me questions about each of these companies to find out if they're good quality companies uh, for me to invest in. Okay, I'm ready to answer them. And first thing that's very important, this is what uh, Warren Buffett always did. He would ask himself these questions, and he always wanted to know of the company, uh, to know what, what the company makes, what their business or service is. He wanted to understand the company before he's going to invest in it. Uh, Buffett always said that when he invests in a stock, he actually feels like he's buying the company. Even though you're just buying some shares, you want to feel like you're buying the whole company or part of the company. So that's the way you want to look at this, is that you're actually buying this company. Uh, so you want to know of the company, what they make, or what service they, they produce. Okay, so Viacom. Now, maybe you know this company or you don't. I'm just going to go through this uh, and just give some random answers. But do you know of this company? Uh, yeah, I kind of know of Viacom, uh, but, you know, not so much, but I'm going to click yes that I know of it. Okay. Um, do you know this company? Okay, Tenant Healthcare. Uh, no, I don't know this company. Starbucks. Yes, I know Starbucks. Qualcomm. I don't know that company very well. Priceline. Yes, I know it. NetApp. And I'm just going to go through and mark ones that I know and I don't. I'm just going to pause this while I go through and answer these questions. Okay, after we've answered the questions whether we know of the company, then it's going to start asking us if they have a dominating product or service. So this was another criteria for Buffett whenever he's doing qualitative analysis. He'll usually consider whether they have a dominated, dominating uh, product or service or, or a unique competitive advantage. So we're going to answer these. And Viacom... Uh, I don't really know of the company that well, so I don't know if they have a unique and dominating product or service. And same thing, we're just going to go through Starbucks. Does it offer a unique and dominating product or service? I would say yes, Starbucks does. Uh, they're known for their unique uh, coffee shops and the type of coffee. And people will specifically go out of their way to buy a Starbucks coffee because it's unique rather than buying another coffee at a different coffee shop. So these are the things you want to look at. Like Coca-Cola would be a unique product 
they have a special formula that other companies don't offer. Uh, John Deere right here is another one. Uh, this is a unique type of tractor. You have John Deere fans. Uh, they keep coming back year after year, and they keep buying the same John Deere products. Harley Davidson, these kind of products are unique and dominating product or service. So that's what you want to keep in mind. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to answer these questions. Okay, another thing that Buffett would like to ask is, uh, do they offer the lowest prices? So, for example, with a company like Walmart, uh, they offer the lowest prices among other uh, stores. And um, that often gives them a competitive advantage because their prices are so low. So people just go shop there for the lowest prices. So this, this was a good um, company to invest in because usually the earnings continue to go up and the company continues to grow if they offer the lowest prices. And these companies last a long time. So Buffett loves these companies that offer the lowest prices of course, compared to competitors. So I'm going to go through and answer whether these companies do that. Viacom, no, I don't think they do. Okay, Macy's, I don't think they offer the lowest prices. Okay, so I'll pause this and go through these. Okay, so after I answered these questions, it says, congratulations, your investment plan has been successfully created. And these are the companies that is given me that are, you know, they, they're good for me. I know of all of these companies. Uh, many of these are, you know, they're household names. These are good companies that have been around a long time. They're big companies. Um, and people will continue to buy them. Like, I, I've loved Apple computers and products for a long time. So I will continually come back and buy Apple again and again. Okay. Uh, people that love Coca-Cola, same thing. So you get a sense of these products and uh, these kind of companies that have unique competitive advantages. And those are the kind of companies you want to buy, especially when they're at bargain prices. Okay, so this should give you a sense of uh, what companies you want to buy. If you want to figure out how many shares uh, that you can buy for the amount of money, then you put it in here. Let's say that I have... Uh, $5,000 that I want to invest and uh, 5000 that I want to invest in one company let's say and the market price per share so let's say with uh, I'm interested in coca-cola so the market price is 42 uh, 43 and then how much is your brokerage fee per trade well, I use Scott Trade, and it's seven dollars to buy and seven dollars to sell. So per trade, for the one, it would be seven dollars. Okay. So I hit calculate, and this will tell me how much I can afford to buy here. So if I bought one share of Coca-Cola at the price, which was forty-two forty-three then I would need to make 33% total return to recover my brokerage fee cost, my $7 brokerage fee cost. So really, you see, it's not even worth for me to buy one share of this. If I bought 59 shares, then I'd only have to make 0.56% to recover my uh, brokerage fee cost, to the $7. Actually, it would be 7 to buy and 7 to sell, so $14 total. Uh, and if I bought the maximum 117 shares, then I would only need to make 0.28 to recover my fees. Okay, so going back to my stocks over here and uh, the stocks that I was interested in buying. The other thing that I like to do is I like to look up a two-year um, chart. And usually on Yahoo or Google Finance, uh, I can look up a two-year chart to see how the stock price has been affected. So I'm just going to look up the stock chart for two years for uh, Coca-Cola Enterprises, uh, Apple, John Deere, and maybe Fossil here. So let's go ahead and look up um, Coca-Cola Enterprises and bring up my browser here. So to do this, you can just look up in Google. And then we can type in Yahoo 
and let's look up Coca-Cola Enterprises. Just put in the ticker. And you click here. Okay, so this brings up Coca-Cola Enterprises. You can see the price. Uh, you can see previous close, the day's range, 52-week range, the volume of stocks to trade, the shares to trade, the average volume over three months of shares to trade. And all this information, I don't want to bore the people that are experienced with stock investing already. Uh, if you're not, if you're not sure what these terms are, then I recommend looking up on uh, Investopedia. That's a good website to find out the individual meanings of different stock terms. And it'll really help you out with that information. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to look at the two-year chart, which I like to look at to give me a, a broader idea of what's happening with the stock price. Okay, so here we're looking at the two-year stock price of Coca-Cola Enterprises. And you can see it's good that this stock has been going up consistently over the last two years. Uh, recently it had a little dip, but no big problems. And uh, it's near its 52-week low. Uh, so here's the one-year mark, and it's near the 52-week low. So that might be a good time to get in on Coca-Cola Enterprises. If we look at another one, Apple. So the chart's coming up on Apple. Now Apple, you can also see that it's good. The stock has been rising consistently over the last two years. So that's a good sign. But the thing that worries me is, uh, you know, it's, it's near its highest mark right now. So I might not want to get in on Apple right now. I might have missed the uh, bargain boat, if you will, on this one. Uh, so let's look up another one. Look up John Deere. Okay, so John Deere, it's more up and down right now. Uh, and John Deere also has a certain kind of, uh, you know, cycle in the stock. Some of these stocks have cycles. And uh, it dips down, it comes back up. But you can see that it basically sticks within the same kind of cycle. It goes down to around 80, and 80 is the bottom, bottoming out part for uh, John Deere. And then it goes up to around uh, 94, 95, and that's the part where it hits in its high usually. Uh, you can see pretty consistently throughout. So right now, it's about, it's a little more than the midpoint right now. Um, with its position. Uh, ideally I'd want to catch John Deere right down at this bottom part around 80, 81, something like that when I'm going to buy. Uh, let's look up uh, another one, uh, Fossil. Okay, here's Fossil. And you see Fossil went up and then this is kind of worrisome for Fossil. Uh, it is steadily decreased, so this is a stock where I might be kind of skeptical to get into this. I'd want to find out what happened up here and why it's continued to fall. I know that uh, Apple has actually entered into the watchmaking process, so they're a big competitor of Fossil right now, and that news might have had something to do with that. So uh, the kind of stocks that I like to buy are stocks that are steadily going upward throughout the two years and then suddenly at the end there was just some problem and it suddenly fell off uh, and I just want to make sure that was some kind of temporary problem that it fell off and if it is a temporary problem then I'll likely buy that stock at a bargain price um, if it's a more permanent problem then I'll stay away from that stock so that just gives you an idea of the types of stocks, uh, how to pick which stock you want to buy, to do the quantitative analysis first with the BTMA stock spreadsheet, and then after you do quantitative, you want to do the qualitative analysis. Uh, and that's using Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham's ideas and approach. So it's a pretty solid approach and a safe approach to stock investing that you can make a lot of money with. So I hope this video has been helpful for you, and have a great day.